Hello and welcome back to my channel. I'm currently sat facing the sun, so I might be squinting or I might be sneezing. And I know if you've seen me before, you're probably wondering, where's my hair gone? I got kind of sick of the fringe recently. It's been really bothering me and I've just been enjoying having my hair out of my face. So we have a little slick back moment going on today. But yeah, what I wanted to do today was go through general, just like ED recovery advice because I have done a lot of Q and A's in my time, but they've never been specifically eating disorder recovery advice, I don't think. And obviously there is a lot of advice spread throughout every single one of my videos, but I always get specific questions and I wanted to answer them for you today. Um, so I basically put something on my story and was just like, any questions or dilemmas that you're in, ask me. Uh, and I'm just gonna scroll through them and answer them really. I haven't actually picked any out, so I, I haven't actually read through them. So these are all gonna be like off the top of my head. I also have made myself hot chocolate because I was gonna have a cup of tea and then I thought, you know what? It's October and the sun might be out, but I wanna feel cozy and I want my hot chocolate. So I've got a hot chocolate. Right, I'm just gonna, oh my gosh, there's so many. I'm just gonna pick one at random. So the first one that I've landed on, which I definitely know how to answer because I had to go through this process myself, um, is how to stop tracking automatically in my head. This will mean like tracking calories, I'm assuming. And I completely don't count calories anymore, but it was something that was such a big part of my eating disorder. Like I tracked absolutely everything. Um, and as always with these videos, if you don't relate to every single thing I say and you don't experience every symptom or side effect or whatever, you are still valid. All eating disorders are different. Everyone's experience is different and that is okay. But personally, I did track calories to quite an obsessive extent. And this person said, you know, how to stop automatically tracking them. It's one thing deleting the apps or stopping writing down everything, but it's another thing entirely stopping your brain from doing that automatic calculation because I know I used to look at a biscuit and know exactly how many calories was in that exact brand of biscuit. And that's obviously really hard to unlearn, right? For me personally, the only way that I stopped automatically adding it up in my head, because I still know a lot of calories of foods. Like I, sorry, there's a siren in the background. As I was saying, I still know a lot of the calories in the foods, but that doesn't impact me at all anymore. I know this person said automatically adding it up, but let's be honest, you can't automatically do maths equations in your head. I think that adding them up is a conscious decision, to be honest. So although you can't unlearn, immediately all the calories in all of the foods don't let yourself add them up look at the food say i know that this has calories in it i know that my eating disorder wants me to add them up so that i can feel a sense of control but i don't need to do that right now because i don't need to know the exact numbers in all of these foods because food is more than numbers and my body needs what my body needs and i don't need to track because i can trust my body and i can trust that i'm going to give myself enough food without knowing the number um and just don't let yourself add it up I know that it's kind of easier said than done and it will take practice and you will slip up. For most people, you probably will slip up. I know I slipped up sometimes and caught myself being like, oh, this biscuit is this plus this packet of crisps I had is this, so that equals this. And, and then I'd be like, hold on, no. I don't do that anymore and it doesn't matter what that was and then I'd have to kind of still have something that scared me later on in the day even though I felt guilty about the calories and things like that. I don't know if that makes sense, but yeah. I'm such a hot chocolate girl. I love it so much. Oh my god. <clears throat> okay. How to deal with drinking and alcohol within recovery slash going out but still eating what you need. This, again, something that I struggled with. Alcohol is not a snack, okay? If you're like me and you're like, alcohol has calories in it so that's going to be my evening snack. No. No, that's not how it works. Alcohol is always an extra. If you saw a hungry person on the street, they need calories obviously, but they need food. You wouldn't go up to someone who's hungry and be like, here, have some whiskey, this will sort your hunger out. Obviously there are calories in alcohol, but that can't replace your food. And it's also so important to, if you are going out drinking, line your stomach and eat enough. I promise you'll feel better the next day for it as well, but it's also just really dangerous to drink on an empty stomach. So I know that there will be a lot of people who have probably had arguments with their parents saying there's calories in the alcohol it's fine i'm basically having a snack but that is not how it works alcohol should always always be an extra i promise you going out drinking like once a week or whatever is not going to drastically change your weight it's just not i feel safe here and i can't imagine a life without illness who am i without 
my eating disorder. I think this is a very common dilemma, if I'm honest, especially when you've had an eating disorder for a long time. By the time you've reached the point where you want to recover, it can sometimes feel like you have completely lost yourself and actually this is the life you've known for years. So how are you gonna cope when you don't have this coping mechanism and this behavior? And it's definitely something that I went through because I got so used to my whole day being consumed with counting calories, doing exercise, avoiding eating, that I really couldn't imagine what my life would be like moving past that and I think the only thing that I can tell you is that there is a life after it and that you will find yourself again and it might not be the same self that it was before you got ill because I know a lot of people actually are scared to recover because they didn't like who they were before their illness. Everyone grows and changes in life. You are not going to be the same person that you were six months ago, a year ago, two years ago, three years ago. You are not going to be that same person. I personally have in recovery gained back all of the bits that I like about myself really, like my sense of humour, I know I'm kind, like I really think when I was struggling with anorexia I didn't give much thought to anyone else around me because I was so consumed with my own thoughts, I didn't have that space to think about other people but I now feel like I can be kind and do good gestures again and I can socialise and I have love for things that I had forgotten about but I've also, through recovery, unlearned a lot of the things that I didn't like about myself because actually a lot of those things were stemming from insecurity which I've healed during recovery. So like one of the things I used to hate about myself was that I was convinced that I was really annoying and I was scared that when I recovered I was going to go back to being really annoying. But actually throughout recovery I've realised that I'm not a really annoying person. I was just being horrible to myself all those years and I had no love for myself or respect for myself so I was just convinced that I was this really annoying person. And I now see that I'm actually not a really annoying person and I know that I've kind of gone on a tangent here but who you are without your eating disorder is going to be so much better than who you are with an eating disorder and that is a promise. You are never going to fulfil your potential or be your best self when you are living with an eating disorder and obviously eating disorders are not a choice so don't blame yourself for that but as scary as it is letting go of that eating disorder personality you have nothing to lose and everything to gain. Is it normal to be mentally hungry when physically full and how to deal with that? So I always get questions like this and I get questions around the topic of binging too. I would just like to say I don't have any expertise in like binge eating disorder or binging as a behavior. It's not actually something I struggled with. It is a thing that a lot of people struggle with, people with anorexia, people with all types of eating disorders. It just personally wasn't part of my illness. But in terms of like mental hunger and extreme hunger, I really, really, really had a big thing of overcoming mental hunger. And by overcoming, I mean letting myself listen to it because I had this feeling that I think this person has where I was like, I've just eaten a massive meal and my stomach is so full that it's painful but mentally I really 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 want to have an ice cream after dinner say and actually I still kind of get that sometimes now obviously if I'm like so physically full to the point where I feel like I, I'll be sick if I eat any more I'll just be like I'll have my ice cream later when it settles down a bit but when you are in early recovery and you haven't eaten as much as you are now for a while your stomach does kind of shrink and it is quite painful to eat more at first, but your mental hunger, in my opinion, is your body telling you that it needs to eat more or your body telling you that it wants more and to ignore that is restriction. So if you are physically full, but your brain is like, I just really, really, really fancy a bowl of this cereal. It's so okay to go and get that because the whole point of recovery is that you are not letting yourself restrict in any form. And I know the guilt can be quite bad because you know your stomach's not rumbling your stomach doesn't need to be rumbling for you to deserve to eat not gonna lie most days now my stomach doesn't rumble because I keep myself topped up to a point where I don't get that hunger but I just eat in a routine and I know that I need to eat I just clicked off it and I've got to start all over again <sighs> I'm getting really warm it's like so cold out and now I'm hot would love to hear about exercise from you if you did some during recovery or now so this is something that I actually I think I spoke about it recently on my Instagram stories exercise is a very tricky topic I think when it comes to anorexia recovery and eating disorder recovery. There's no denying that exercise is good for our mental health in a general sense. Is exercise good for your mental health when you've been addicted to it and you have anorexia? That's kind of a different matter. I actually had a DM from someone and it was like I really hate that people always assume that exercising in recovery is an obsessive thing and I think it honestly really just depends on who you are. Like for me when I exercised, I didn't exercise actually in recovery for the first seven or eight months I want to say. 
I just did no exercise because I was so addicted to exercise and I knew that anything I did would become compulsive basically so I just didn't exercise I just let my body heal let my body rest let it gain weight like it had been through so much I didn't feel like I needed to be pushing it I mean the anorexia in my brain wanted me to but part of my recovery was overcoming that and when I did start to exercise I think I did a couple like home workouts because I wanted to feel a bit stronger um and that was literally it but to be honest throughout 2022 all I did was yoga I did a couple home workouts here and there but I was never in a routine I never really stuck to anything um so I did a bit of yoga and this year I've been to the gym like a couple times uh with my boyfriend I do want to become stronger but I just enjoy moving on my body in a more gentle way most of the time like I love playing squash because that doesn't even feel like exercise to me like when I'm playing squash I'm having fun and playing a game. I usually go with my dad, so it's, you know, it's nice to spend time with my dad and that's what I focus on. I never really think of it as exercise. So yeah, exercise isn't really something that I have done in recovery and it's not something I do in terms of intense exercise. I do move my body because it makes me feel good, but that comes in things like dog walking or, as I said, yoga. I do feel like there's a lot of um, maybe people who've had experiences with eating disorders online or recovery accounts that will be at the gym constantly, and that is something that I personally found really unhelpful because I think a really big part of anorexia recovery is letting your body rest and actually becoming comfortable with not always doing exercise because if you are feeling anxious missing a workout your relationship with exercise isn't healthy that is just my opinion but I do just want to normalize not doing exercise in recovery uh, because I know that it can be quite triggering to see people online doing loads of exercise and that's their thing like they can do what they want not everyone has the same struggles as I said but it's okay to not exercise in recovery and if you do want to start exercising, you know, maybe after a little while of he healing your relationship with food and your body. I would suggest going about it in more fun ways. An aeroplane is going over one second. Perks of living near an airport. <laughs> okay, anyway, my final bit of advice on exercise and recovery is when you get back into it, pick something that you genuinely enjoy doing. I think it's easier to do exercise and it not be compulsive if it's like a racket sport and it's a game uh, or even like football, rugby, whatever you enjoy, or even climbing. I think things where you can have goals and you can see improvements, but it's not numbered can be really helpful. So yeah. The next question is how to not obsess over losing overshoot weight. Or losing weight in the future. Now I actually read a blog post from a girl that I follow called Leith recently who actually spoke about this and about how when she recovered from anorexia she let her body overshoot and she let her body... By the way when we say overshoot I think these are people referring to when you're given like a healthy weight goal by a team or whatever and then you overshoot it. Sorry if um, the camera's like moved, it just died uh, and I had to put a new battery in it and now I'm kind of worried that this one's gonna die because it says it's full battery but my other one said that and then it died so we'll see. Right, where was I? Oh, I think I was talking about Leith's blog post that I saw and this feeling of like having to lose overshoot weight. So basically I will link this blog post down below but I found it a really interesting read and actually a really valuable read. Basically Leith, when she recovered from anorexia, I think she kind of overshot the healthy weight range, right? she had starved her body for a very long time and part of her healing process was allowing herself and her body to have what it needed and have what it wanted and that meant that she gained more weight than her team had like needed her to or whatever. I, I'm probably getting some of this wrong because I read it quite a while ago but it was also something that I really worried about when I entered recovery because I think a lot of us have this worry that we are going to gain and gain and gain and gain and gain and it will never end and actually if you started recovery from a higher weight anyway that's probably even that's probably an even bigger fear because um it feels like you have less time or whatever to like eat whatever you want but you are allowed to eat whatever you want no matter what weight you start at you are allowed to eat whatever you want no matter what weight you are i know that especially when you have anorexia the concept of becoming overweight is obviously scary but being overweight is not an awful thing it's very demonized um in the media and obviously like in society generally but first of all it's okay to be overweight but second of all the thing that i really liked about leith's blog post. I feel like I'm probably saying her name wrong. Leith? Yeah, one of the things that I really liked about this blog post was that she basically 
documented her journey from being underweight to a healthy weight to overweight and then she did lose some of the like overshoot weight I think but her approach to it was not intentional so she didn't like gain this weight and then suddenly switch up and start losing weight because she'd overshot she let her body do its natural thing and actually once she'd like satisfied the extreme hunger that she had her appetite leveled out and it kind of went back down and naturally she just lost a bit of that weight and I think I thought when I got to my healthy weight that I would have to just cut back and I'd have to take things out of my meal plan and I'd have to restrict basically to maintain the weight I was at but that's how I know that I'm like at my ideal weight because I think my body has changed a bit in the last year like I ate to my hunger and I ate whatever I wanted and I still do that and I didn't actually have to change anything like when I got to my healthy weight I think I was eating the same maybe even more sometimes than I was when I was on a weight gain meal plan uh and you know my appetite's changed now but my body just kind of did its thing so I think the fear of like having to lose weight in the future because you let your body go too far is like a really common fear but it's also such an anorexia fueled fear like your body is not going to go too far because going too far is not a thing but also the whole point of recovering from anorexia is that you never have to restrict so I feel like I've kind of said a lot and maybe not address the point but I feel like it's a really hard thing to address yeah I'll leave the blog post down below I hope some of that made sense I don't know um oh I put my drink down when I went to swap my battery I'm nearly finished with it anyway actually how do I tell people that I struggle with anorexia even if I look healthier now right this is such an interesting question because this is something that I've actually struggled with and actually might sound bad but even now when I tell people that I'm meeting for the first time about like what I do for work and then they're like oh what do you post about and I'm like anorexia I have this thought in my head that they're gonna look at me and go oh you don't really look like anorexic or whatever guys there's another airplane going over in truth it does make me anxious to tell people that I have anorexia at the weight I am now because I do have this feeling that people are going to look at me and be like really but that is a fear that actually goes against what I believe anyway because I know that anorexia isn't a body type or a body size and I have had a lot of people say to me like I think even I got a new consultant at one point and she I think it was lockdown when she had been dealing with my like case and I'd kind of like gained weight before I first met her and she was like hold on like you don't look how I was expecting you to look basically um and I remember at the time being like oh my god like she thinks that I'm bigger and that I'm like not really anorexic and that is like an invalidating feeling like it's hard to explain to people that don't have anorexia but being told that you don't look anorexic is obviously an invalidating feeling because then when you're in recovery you're also like well why am I bothering recovering then because I don't even look anorexic and it is really stressful but I think telling people that you struggle with anorexia even when you're in a healthy body take that as your opportunity to educate them like people need to know that anorexia is not a body type that people can be anorexic without being severely underweight like I tell people now that I have been recovering from anorexia because I feel like it just cuts out any talk of oh really like you're not what an anorexic person looks like to me or whatever like doesn't even give that chance because I'm like I'm doing well and then they're like oh okay and I just find that the easiest way to go about it but then when I say that sometimes people are like oh wow you look really well and then I have to be like well yeah because I got myself to a healthy weight so I could be recovered so that's how I'd go about it I feel like I'm very rambly today guys I'm home alone um and I haven't really spoken to anyone all day so now I'm just like blah, 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 blah. let's do another scroll do, do, do. how do you start to convince yourself you deserve food or does it just come with recovery at the start of my recovery I had the thoughts constantly while I was eating about how I didn't deserve food about how I was going to get fat about how I shouldn't be eating what I was eating and I was being gluttonous and greedy and all of those things because anorexia wants you to believe that anorexia wants to keep you in its grips and truthfully I don't think that at the start of recovery a lot of people will feel like they deserve food because you can't just flick a switch and suddenly be like I deserve food or you can say that but deep down a lot of the time you're probably not going to feel it straight away it definitely comes with time it's definitely something that you learn I think it took me a long time of eating and affirming to myself that I deserved food for me to really believe that deep down um and I think that's okay like 
it takes time and with recovery a lot of it is practice uh, and I know that probably sounds weird but it is basically just being consistent with what you tell yourself even when you don't believe what you're telling yourself deep down and eventually it will start to sink in and you'll start to know that you deserve food because now when I look at my body I'm like I know it deserves food it's just a body and I, I'm just alive and it's keeping me alive and of course I should fuel it like it's not it's not really a thought in my head anymore so yeah feeling like I need to lose weight at each appointment for them to take me seriously eating disorder services are such a mess in a lot of places and it sucks. I've heard of so many people just being turned away because they're like, well, you're not actually losing weight very fast or you're not actually very underweight. And like, what a load of bullshit. A number on a scale cannot quantify how much a person is mentally struggling. I think the advice I'd give in response to this is stop letting other people's view of you or opinions of you rule your life. Like, are you really gonna throw away your life because a healthcare professional sees your weight go up on a scale or sees your weight stay the same even? If a healthcare professional is not taking you seriously because you're not losing weight and you have an eating disorder, I don't know why they're in their job. Because the whole point of treating people with eating disorders is to help them get better and consistently losing weight for restrictive eating disorders is not helping them get better. So I really think that it's about stopping caring about what other people think of you and knowing in your heart that actually you are unwell and you do deserve help no matter what healthcare professionals think. I think it's a really hard, hard thought and a lot of these anorexia thoughts are really hard to think yourself out of as well because you can always find some form of justification for your thought. So yeah, it is, it is hard, it is really hard but basically you are valid and you are still unwell even if you're not continuously losing weight or even if you're not losing weight at all. How did you keep pushing in recovery, was it so? <laughs> when you were a healthy weight and you still had fears and rules. I'm pretty sure I was a healthy weight when I was, when I made my like eating my seven biggest fear food videos. I can't really remember, but I had to keep going because what would be the point in getting myself to a healthy weight and then just living with fears and rules? Like I was not gonna do it in halves. I was not gonna just get to a healthy weight and let myself live miserably um, or live while still restricting. You're recovering because you want a free and healthy relationship with food and you're recovering because you want your life back. You being a healthy weight doesn't mean that you shouldn't face your fear foods. Eating your fear foods is not gonna make you gain weight. That's a fear that I used to have. Like I thought if I ate a donut, I was just gonna like gain weight which is not how it works. But yeah, I think a lot of it is also thinking about how you would talk to someone else. Like if your friend who was a healthy weight said, oh, I'm really scared of eating donuts, would you say to them, stay scared because you're not underweight? Like that logic doesn't make sense, does it? I know, I know it does if you are having like those anorexic thoughts, but when you actually look at it from like an outside perspective, that doesn't make any sense. Have I got hot chocolate around my mouth? I wouldn't be surprised if I do. How do I handle bloating and stomach pains after eating? It makes everything much harder. Totally get this. I was in that position for quite a while. Every like post dinner, I would sit down on the sofa and I would have a hot water bottle against my stomach. I would also drink like peppermint tea, which seemed to help. Also cover up your mirrors or just don't look in them and wear baggy clothes because the bloating can be really, really hard to see, especially, you know, my um, kind of anorexia was focused a lot on wanting to be flat. And so seeing like a bloated stomach was like, oh my God. I'm in a place now where I'm like, that's the most normal thing in the world. Like I still get kind of bloated after meals sometimes. And I'm like, duh, like I just ate a meal. My body's processing it. And I think my therapist at the time actually said to me, Okay, so I've just changed cameras because my battery decided to die again and I am, I feel like I'm really showing how disorganized I am. Like I knew I was gonna film this video and I just didn't charge the batteries because it just didn't enter my head. And I didn't take a freaking thumbnail either. Guys, I'm so, I'm so bad at this. Like the organization side of things. Like I love the chatting, I love the editing, but the actual organization, not for me. I cannot remember what the last thing I was saying was. Did I finish what I was saying? Oh, I was talking about my therapist, like, and the science behind it. He was basically saying, like, your body bloating is because your body is metabolizing the food and breaking the food down and it just creates gas in your stomach and that is just how it is. You bloating is not you gaining fat. I was a bit delulu in my early recovery and was like, oh my god, like, I've that's instantly just put fat on me. At the end of the day, that is the aim of the game, but feeling like it's happened after you've eaten one meal is a bit overwhelming. Um... 
I think I'm going to do a part two of this video because I have spoken quite a lot. Let me know down below if that's something you'd want and I will get on with like filming that. Adjusting to life after inpatient. I hope this isn't a triggering topic. Okay, thank you for all the people that have been so like sensitive with the questions that they've asked because I used to get like really, really triggering questions. Um, and I also do want to preface my answer to this by saying most people don't go inpatient like it is a very 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 small percentage of people that go inpatient and actually going inpatient is not necessarily dependent on how ill you are like for a lot of people it's the access that their area has to that service you do not need to go inpatient to be worthy of recovery i actually wish i had never gone inpatient that's not to scare anyone because there are really great units out there but my experience with them was not helpful um and i did so much better out of hospital than I ever did in hospital and I do think that's probably the same for a lot of people but as I said there are great units out there so it might not be the case for you and that's fine but I did like this question because I think it's something that nobody ever talks about obviously you know it's not like an experience that's normal for everyone but I I've been out of inpatient services for three years now over three wait yeah over three years and I still feel like I'm adjusting to life it didn't help that I was discharged into lockdown but being in an inpatient setting especially for like a long time it really really skews how you interact with the world because you're so used to like having clinical people around you all the time and you're so used to only really talking to other people who are in the same situation as you that when you start going out and about and you see all these not normal or mentally well people just living their lives it's like how the fuck do i interact with everyone and how do i go about my life because you get you do a lot of the time get institutionalized because you get woken up at 8 a.m for your breakfast and then you get told that you've got to have lights out at like 10 p.m and then it's like you get so used to the routines and to you know not having a phone and just in your free time reading or all of that sort of stuff and then you get out and you have your phone back and you have all these privileges back and you have all the this like freedom and it's like what do i do with myself and it's okay to feel overwhelmed like it's okay to feel scared and stressed and like you have no idea what's going on give yourself a rest give yourself a break and stop being mean to yourself also aiming this at myself because you didn't have a normal experience for those years or for those months or for those weeks that you were in hospital and i also think being impatient can sometimes make you dependent on people looking after you and make you feel like you know you're allowed to eat when people are like handing your meal and sitting with you and telling you that you need to eat it but how do you learn to eat after that and i really think it's about trying to remember that a life in a hospital is not a life and that the aim at the end of the day is to be living outside of hospital and be taking care of yourself and to do that you need to eat by yourself um you need to kind of copy what people around you are doing and just get yourself food when you know you want food and when you need food and also spend time socializing if you can with people that know about your situation because you'll kind of be able to get their you can kind of feed off their like knowledge of the outside world this sounds really strange but you can see how they're interacting with other people without throwing yourself in the deep end and just having to go and interact with other people like i don't know if this will make sense to people or if people will relate to this but i know there will be people that were like in the same situation as me and have found it hard to adjust back into like normal life and also sometimes it can feel like you're walking around and carrying this big secret and it's like you guys didn't even know that i was like totally not well recently and like i was not in the public <laughs> like because also especially when you speak to people that like don't really know a lot about mental illness or are not used to like, interacting with people with mental illness if it ever comes up that you were like in a psychiatric unit or whatever quite a lot of the time they're like oh my god like people kind of forget that there actually are just like units that are just meant for nurturing recovery so yeah adjusting back into the real world or the real world it is the real world but <laughs> the normal world can be scary and stressful and basically my advice is to a keep up with your recovery because you don't want to go back to hospital you can't live a life in a hospital and b be kind to yourself because it is okay that things feel overwhelming and it is okay that things feel stressful and those are my two cents on it i really hope this video was helpful um i do feel like i may have rambled a little bit but i always feel like that and then people are like it was helpful and i'm like yay so we'll see i guess um if you want a part two as i said let me know down below please like please subscribe i absolutely love this community that we have um and i love you all and please look after yourselves and yeah i'll leave like links and stuff down in the description so 
think that's all and I'll see you next week.